My name is Juno Diaz. I've written three books, Drown, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde, and This Is How You Lose Her. I know that when I was a, a young kid, I uh, couldn't put down Richard Adams' uh, Watership Down, you know, the rabbit book. I, like, absolutely love that book. It still holds up. You know, beyond just the classic, like, hero's journey, the idea that, like, these rabbits, the most cowardly, vulnerable, fragile little animals, you know, have to be, like, incredibly heroic. That just spoke to me. Um, but, you know, there's an enormous range. Like, most readers, we have such a cast of characters. I'm a huge Aaron Dati Roy, of course. Um, Anjana Apachana, Incantations and Other Stories, a book had an enormous impact on me. Um, Cristina Garcia, Sandra Cisneros. Um, Oscar Huelos, Edward P. Jones is Lost in the City, probably the most perfect story collection. Um, but you know, it keeps going, it keeps going. I mean, Juan Rufo, uh, Pedro Mead, um, of course, the, the great ones like Maxine on Kingston, Toni Morrison, young folks, people my age, so we're not young anymore, um, Edwige Dantecat, Paul Beatty, you know. Um, Folks like that really like just, just, just make me really happy to be able to have those books around me. Okay, um, uh, that's a good question. I actually, this morning I was just reading all my papers. I'm one of those people who like read three newspapers in the morning because I'm looking to avoid work. Well, I mean, especially, I, I just always thought, um, you know, like the sort of the voice you use for your books, they're just a, kind of an interface. In many ways, they're sort of like, a, for me, even though I think folks get, uh, are interested in talking about the voice and stuff, for me, it's kind of a, a, a strategic form of obfuscation. It's like a way for me kind of do my narrative work behind this kind of shimmering, attractive screen. Most of my students are not aspiring writers, which makes my work awesome, you know? Part of the reason I think, like, you know, I think I, I add a couple of months to my life every year by not having that. Um, and I think, you know, the thing about aspiring artists is that we're in a culture where there is nothing but advice. I mean, you know, and, and there's nothing that any writer needs to know that she can't find online. Yeah. In fact, I would say that there is, you know, that there is an oversaturation of advice. Um, you know, what's really interesting about being a writer these days in this generation is that there's more talk about writing. There's more material about being a writer than there is actually reading culture. It's kind of wild. It's like I always joke with my friends. It's like there are no trees, but there are a million axe clubs, you know. I gotta say, I'm pretty stodgy. I'm sort of a really morning person. Um, the, the only bag that I have is that if I talk to anyone, um, I can't write, like it's done for the day. So I have to get up, right from my silence of sleep, I go to work. If someone tries to have a conversation or if I have to talk to anybody for any reason, whatever that connection that I built overnight, Whatever that like beanstalk that like grew up overnight to connect to my writing place immediately collapses, and so it's it's weird. I don't know why that's so, but that's that's me in my morning. Um, but when it comes to reading, I can read anywhere. I think that I wish I could write the way I read. You know, like I I I read everywhere. I think that's how come I get so much reading done, man. I, I'm telling you, I I know I'm gonna fall to my death reading one day. I'm gonna be like, walk right off a cliff, man. My friends are like, wild. They just, they're like, you are a wild dude. Like, if I pull up to a, a toll, and I'm thinking like, I got like 13 seconds, I can read one line. I would literally snatch the book and read it. And I'm the dude you're always beeping at in a car. I'm that dude. <laughs>